Shania is a journalist who comes back to India decades later to cover weddings. She initially hates her liaison officer, Harbhajan. She later warms up to him when he helps her find her long-lost father. Rajinder and Mandy are praying to the Sikh gods with their young daughter, Shania. As an adult, Shania is late for her meeting at Sterling Online magazine. She reminds Mandy she needs to eat healthy before stepping in for work. Her colleague, Mark, reminds her she's late but flirts with her. She reminds him she's his boss, but doesn't mind. The editor-in-chief at Sterling, Claudia, asks Alexa about her story on winter trends. They discuss a photographer they all don't like. Mark wants to see Shania again, but she's strict about not sleeping with anyone more than three times. Shania apologizes for getting held up in the hallway, but they all know she was otherwise engaged. Claudia announces that she's retiring. Sterling's ranking has slipped in the last two months, so she needs more trendy content. She wants the person who handles this situation to take over as editor-in-chief after her. Shania and Alexa have been shortlisted for the role, and she wants Whitney and Lydia to help them with their stories. She asks to see Alexa first in her office and reminds them only one of them can win. Surely this is some healthy competition. In India, Officer Harbhajan Singh's colleague convinces a street vendor to give him food for free. He threatens to close his shop, but Harbhajan is not interested in such practices. He's in the area with a police alert, but another team is already handling the situation. Harbhajan really wants to do some real police work, but is stuck with checking up on the senior citizens. An elderly woman mistakes them for robbers and claims she doesn't want their protection. Claudia already likes Alexa's ideas for improving their app and hopes Shania has some good ones too. Shania wants to focus on some old trends or animal prints, but Claudia doesn't like any of her ideas. When Shania mentions her chai being cold, Claudia remembers an article she read about the different ceremonies at Indian weddings. She thinks Shania is perfect to do a story on India, since she's from there. Shania hates India more than anything, and hasn't been there since she was six years old. There's surely a story here. She refuses to go back and is proud that she's from Orange County. Um, isn't her promotion at stake? Claudia reminds her that India is a hot topic currently. Billions of Indians all over the world can easily help make their content viral. She surely has a point. Claudia encourages her more by assuring Shania that such an article can easily help her get the editor-in-chief position. Shania feels there are too many ceremonies in Indian weddings, so Claudia also convinces her to cover at least five of them at different weddings. She wants Shania to interview the brides and do a photo shoot in a gorgeous Indian city. Shania remembers India has a lot of bugs and is worried about her arachnophobia. These excuses are more creative now. Claudia still insists she needs to go. Shania runs to Whitney for help and begs her to find a way out of this India trip. She wants to come up with a better story idea before Claudia books her tickets. Good luck with that. Whitney reminds Shania that Claudia has been running a top fashion magazine for over 20 years. It's clear that if Claudia feels an Indian theme story can help Shania get the editor-in-chief position, it's a no-brainer. Finally, someone pointed it out. Shania hates weddings in India, but Whitney feels that shouldn't come in the way of her dreams. She asks Shania to use a spray for her arachnophobia, or they'll have to start taking orders from Alexa. Everyone needs such a friend. Whitney feels Shania can visit the places her dad kept mentioning from his village. Harbhajan's boss, Commissioner Avtar Singh, understands that he wants to work on a real case. Harbhajan's late father was his friend and a great man. Avtar is giving Harbhajan risk-free assignments because of his mother, who lost everything when his dad was slain. Harbhajan understands that this job is scary for her, but thinks his boredom dealing with the elderly might end him first. What a strong argument. He begs Avtar to give him something more meaningful, so he tries to find something with minimal risk. He opens Shania's file, who has applied for a visa as an American journalist through the Ministry of Information. Avtar thinks foreign journalists always create problems because they want to uncover some human rights drama with their stories. He feels that can be bad for India and wants Harbhajan to monitor her. He assigns Harbhajan as her liaison officer while she photographs weddings. Avtar knows covering weddings is not that risky, but he feels one enthusiastic journalist can easily ruin India's reputation. Fair point. Harbhajan feels the only thing wrong with Punjabi weddings is usually the drunk relatives. Clearly, he is not married yet. Avtar asks him to take this assignment in a positive spirit and make sure Shania's stories are limited to weddings. Harbhajan only agrees to do this because he's tired of checking up on the elderly. Mandy brings some masks and books that can help Shania on her flight. Shania is packing some of Mandy's old shirts because she wants to look a little Indian for this project. Mandy remembers the good times she had in India. She hands over a package to Shania to deliver to Rajinder in Chandigarh. 
Shania hasn't spoken to her dad since she was six, but Mandy insists this is important. Shania had apparently snuck a few pictures out of his suitcase when he was leaving for India. Mandy wants him to have them now, because she was too angry to return them earlier. Mandy has been in touch with him recently after avoiding him for years. Mandy feels he is a good man, but Shania doesn't believe a decent man will leave his family. Mandy knows he tried to make things right, but she didn't let him. His last message sounded too sad, and she knows she has forgiven him. She asks Shania to forgive him too, but she only agrees to deliver the package because it's important to Mandy. After landing at the Chandigarh airport, someone throws powder colors on Shania. She regrets coming to the country and approaches Harbhajan as an officer of law to help her. This will surely go well. She claims she was attacked, but he feels they only made her clothes more colorful. Amazing attitude. He explains that he can't stop anyone from celebrating Holi, the festival of colors, which happens every year. She hates how rude he is and assumes that the driver, Donald, is her liaison officer. She follows Donald but Harbhajan wonders if she's trying to cover weddings or reconnect with her Indian roots. Great, he has already judged her. She doesn't like him following her but he explains he's not happy about being her liaison officer either. She feels he's already failing in his duties of protecting her from locals. She has a point. Shania still sits with him and offers sanitizer, but Harbhajan prefers using old-fashioned methods like soap. Shania feels that's not enough for how dirty India is, but realizes how mean that sounds. She admits the airport was great, and he jokes about at least one part of India not disappointing her. He shows her some bulls and thinks that's exactly how she must be picturing India. Too many stereotypes of her. Shania admits India is not a village anymore and has changed a lot since she last visited. She still cracks up when she finds a family of five riding on one scooter. Oh well. Donald admits he kept an American name, even if his real one is Tan Weir. He wants to manifest America in his life and has applied for the green card lottery. He talks about the American woman of his dreams, but Shania starts screaming when she spots a mosquito. Harbhajan finds it funny that she's scared of it, but still throws it out of the window. He stops to pray at the Gurdwara, and Shania remembers the time she prayed with her dad. She remembers Rajinder making fun of her arachnophobia when she was young. He used to call her a typical American. He reminds her she's also a Sikh, who are warriors. When Harbhajan is back, Donald asks if Shania will help him find an American match. He knows they have sites for arranged marriages too, but Shania has never shown interest in weddings. I mean, this might be a fun task. Shania admits she never wants to marry. Harbhajan drops her off at her hotel and warns her about bedbugs. He's really not letting it go. Claudia asks Shania to cover middle-class weddings since they have already seen slum dogs and millionaires because of Hollywood. Harbhajan's mom is worried that he's working with an American woman. She heard news about an American attacking a Sikh, thinking they're Muslim. Harbhajan assures her all Americans aren't alike, and she needs to stop watching so many movies. His mom still feels he doesn't know how to have fun and isn't even thinking about dating anyone. Whitney calls Shania and asks for an update about work. She also asks about her dad's package, which Shania feels she needs to deliver personally. Shania dons some Indian clothes and gets a traditional welcome from the hotel staff in the morning. Donald has decorated his cab with American flags, and she loves the effort. Mark starts flirting as soon as he calls her and informs her that her photographer is sick. He's unable to fly from Delhi to Chandigarh, but Shania can't cover her first wedding without one. What a setback. Donald knows of a local photographer, so Shania asks Mark to send another one for the next day. Harbhajan teases her about her colleague sounding too friendly. Is that jealousy we detect? She's mostly glad her phone works. He jokes about India only having one satellite for the whole country, and she almost believes people are pretending to talk on the phone. They arrive at the first wedding's Mahendi function, where Harbhajan lifts her so she doesn't crib about the puddles. Donald is excited to meet his photographer friend Parveen, who hands his portfolio to Shania. She knows she doesn't have any other options, so she asks him to photograph the event and is polite to him. The bride, Devika, drags Shania to her ceremony, and she fits in easily with the crowd. Shania starts recording Devika's ceremony and her henna tattoo. Devika explains this is like a bridal shower, and the henna is applied to make the bride more beautiful on her wedding day. Devika starts explaining the other ceremonies at the wedding, but they all get distracted by people shouting. Shania learns they are hijras, or transgenders, who show up at any wedding to bless the bride. Shania asks Parveen to take their photos, but Harbhajan doesn't let her ask them questions. He dismisses them, and the Hedras complain about people treating them like a curse. 
Shania sympathizes with them, but Harbhajan doesn't give her a chance to interact with them either. He claims he's doing his job, but Shania is angry he didn't let her talk to them. Seems weirdly suspicious. Shania discusses with Whitney how the photographer got all the angles wrong. Claudia still loves the style and wants to keep the authenticity in the photos. Shania decides to continue working with Parveen because of Claudia, but Alexa and Lydia are listening in on their conversation. This doesn't look good for her. Whitney teases Shania about Harbhajan in the photos and thinks he's very cute. Shania wants to discuss a side story about Hijraz and how she's planning an editorial on them. She's sure it's a big deal because no one wants her to know about them. Whitney is impressed she's already thinking like an editor-in-chief. They arrive at the Sangeet ceremony of the second wedding, where Shania tries to interview the bride. The dancer, Bhavna, asks Shania to interview her and Salman instead. She's very excited and feels like she's the perfect subject of an interview. Bhavna knows people in Punjab love her, and she plans to take her team with Salman, called Cookies and Cream, to Bollywood. She explains that they sing and dance to traditional music at weddings, but make it modern. Parveen snaps her photos and flirts with Bhavna, so Salman gets offended. Parveen doesn't think they have anything going on, so Salman bends on his knees and asks Pavna to marry him. Well, that was easy. Pavna is thrilled to be with him, and they all start singing and dancing. Some kids drag Shania and Harbhajan to the dance floor, who feel awkward and try to discuss the weather. Well, that is the perfect awkward topic. Shania feels she doesn't fit in with her mom's old clothes, even if that wasn't her intention. Harbhajan reminds her that India has changed and feels it's fine. They keep nervously dancing and smiling at each other. Shania decides to ditch her scarf the next morning so Donald and Harbhajan seem uncomfortable with her cleavage. She feels more confident as they head to the wedding. She finds the hijras again, leaving the third wedding's chuni ceremony. Harbhajan tries to make them leave again, so one of them assures Shania they'll be there at the next wedding too. A relative meets Shania at the door and introduces her to the groom and the whole family. Avtar asks Harbhajan for an update, who wants to fill him in after the ceremony. Shania is surprised to find that Bhavna is the bride, but the groom is not Salman. Now, that's a twist. The hostess explains that the groom gifts the chuni, or a kind of scarf, that the bride will wear at the wedding. The groom tries to bond with Shania since he's from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She asks how long they've known each other and is surprised they've only met once before. Bhavna gets a text and runs outside to meet Salman. He begs her to introduce him to her dad once but Bhavna insists she can't betray her dad like this. She reminds him she's Hindu and he's a Muslim, and there's no way that can work out. Salman also asks Shania to help him convince her, but Bhavna begs him to leave if he loves her. She threatens to do something horrible to herself, so he reluctantly leaves. Bhavna explains that most of her family was slain by Muslims in Pakistan during partition. She feels stupid for falling in love with a Muslim and knows no one in her family will accept this. Looks like religion is coming in between love again. Shania goes off the record the next time, when she asks Bhavna about Salman in front of the families. Bhavna explains that he's her singing partner for all her shows. She tries to make it sound like he's an invitee to her wedding, but Shania interferes and asks if Bhavna loves him. The groom feels betrayed, and all the ants accuse Bhavna of being characterless. Harbhajan is frustrated that Shania interfered and ruined Bhavna's wedding. Shania doesn't regret saving Bhavna from a marriage she didn't want. Harbhajan knows she's trying to save the world and asks her not to interfere with a culture she knows nothing about. Shania also refuses to accept a culture where people value what others think more than what the couple feels in their hearts. It seems like the wounds run deep. Shania remembers her childhood when she asked Mandy for a story about India. Mandy remembers how she fell in love with the place and Rajinder. She felt it was magical and then they grew apart. They both realized India is not suitable for her and neither is America for him. Rajinder doesn't like that Shania is all American and doesn't know anything about her Indian roots. Mandy asks him to take a good look at their house. She shows him how thoroughly they all follow Indian traditions, which begin with the Sikh prayers in the morning. Whitney explains to Shania that Indian weddings are scheduled by astrologers who decide which time is auspicious. As Shania continues working, Mandy hopes she can take out some time to meet her dad. As Shania looks at old pictures, she remembers a time from her childhood. Shania is praying like Rajinder used to. She has found the chance in a box in a garage he didn't take with her. She kept wondering why he left them. She finds a letter from Rajinder, who assured Mandy in the past that he doesn't care about her scars from ovarian cancer. Mandy feels everything changed, but Rajinder assures her it's nothing to do with the disease. Shania gets drunk and starts praying on the streets with a bottle of wine. A homeless man asks her to make noise in private, but she doesn't care. 
She gets arrested for it and is made to sit in a car with one of the hijras from before, Sharmila. She has been arrested for indecent exposure in public. Sharmila explains that when someone refused to give her money at a wedding, she threatened to take off her clothes. She realizes it's extreme, but feels it's the only way to get paid. Shania suggests she should get a job, but Sharmila knows no one will hire her. Shania wonders what Sharmila meant when she claimed they were treated as a curse earlier. She explains they're treated as a dirty secret, but the cops don't let them talk much. They throw Sharmila in a cell for men, while Shania is thrown in an empty one for women. Shania still manages to talk to her and asks her to explain what she meant by woman's soul trapped in a man's body. Sharmila explains that when people in India are born with no sexual organs, their parents don't accept them. Sharmila has always felt she's a woman trapped in a man's body. Her family soon gave her away to the Hijra community and broke all ties with her. Harbhajan bails Shania out, but she jokes about making a friend in prison. Is she forgetting he's a cop? Shania apologizes to Harbhajan because she appreciates that he bailed her out. Alexa and Lydia write a letter to Avtar pretending to be Whitney. Well, that is diabolical. They ask Avtar to comment on Hijras in an effort to stop whatever Shania is doing. Shania is dressed in proper Indian clothes this time, but finds Officer Chahel in the car instead of Harbhajan. Donald only knows that Harbhajan has been removed from this assignment. Shania pretends she doesn't care and tries to bond with Chahel. He's too cold and doesn't appreciate the joke about her being arrested recently. I mean, he is a cop. Shania attends the Anan Karaj ceremony next in a Gurdwara. She finds some hijras outside and asks for Sharmila. Chahal also doesn't let her talk to them and makes them leave. Shania asks the bride's father about the ceremony. He explains that Anand Karaj is their version of church, and when they say goodbye to their daughter, he gets emotional about his daughter growing up and leaving him. When he keeps talking about how she's still his little girl, Shania can't relate to it. Shania finds Sharmila's house and learns that someone beat her up. Sharmila took Shania's advice and tried to get a job at a local store. They laughed at her and beat her up. She's glad for Shania's support, but feels even the cops won't help or respect her. Shania asks Sharmila for permission to share her struggles with the world. Harbhajan assures Avtar he thought Shania was doing an article on weddings and not Hidras. Avtar feels Shania needs to respect their rules, especially since she didn't take any approval for a story on Hidras. Avtar has an order to confiscate her laptop and asks Harbhajan to cooperate. Shania is writing about how Hidras are cursed in India and what Sharmila has to go through. She knows people like her only want respect. She chooses to ignore the text from Harbhajan asking her to stop the Hidra story. He personally reminds her the next time to stay focused on her wedding story. He insists she needs approval if she wants to write about Hidras. Shania doesn't think she will get permission for him, so he's frustrated with her persistence. They attend the reception ceremony of the fifth wedding, where the bride, Harlene, introduces herself. Shania asks about the ceremony and is surprised to find Bhavna again at the wedding. She's literally everywhere. Bhavna is Harlene's friend and is excited she's getting married to Salman now. She thanks Shania for intervening because her dad finally agreed to choose her happiness over their history. She even asks Shania to be her bridesmaid. Bhavna and Salman take the stage and everyone starts dancing. Shania drags Harbhajan to the floor too. Harbhajan feels Shania should be happy that Bhavna's wedding with Salman can be her pending fifth wedding. Shania is distracted because she's worried about the package she needs to deliver to her dad. She asks for his help, and he jokes about meeting her dad when they're not even dating. Let's hope she can take the hint. They find the address, and Shania wonders if he will recognize her. They ask around for Rajinder, but can't find him anywhere. Harbhajan finally learns from a man at the Gurdwara that Rajinder is no more. Harbhajan can understand how she feels since he lost his dad too. Shania grieves in the Gurdwara, and Harbhajan comforts her. She remembers asking Rajinder what happens after the end of life. He believed people reincarnate so their souls can come back as something else for the people they love. He used to insist he would always come back as a pigeon for her. Harbhajan brings Shania to the cremation ground, where Rajinder's last rites were performed. Harbhajan doesn't like that people just become bodies after expiration. He remembers the time his father passed away, and he kept sitting alone way after everyone left. She explains what her dad used to tell her about coming back as a pigeon. She wonders if any of the birds can be him, but Harbhajan thinks he will find her. He takes her shopping, where she keeps missing Rajinder. Harbhajan feels the pain never gets better, and people just learn to live with it. He also feels energy never dies and only changes its form. Since the soul is an energy, he thinks her dad might be around somewhere. He forces her to try street food and ignores her concerns about hygiene. How sweet is that? 
Aftar reminds Harbajan that he needs to get Shania's laptop. Harbajan doesn't think she's harmful, but Aftar insists he needs it. Aftar also promises to let Shania go scot-free if Harbajan brings it. When she sleeps in the car, Harbajan slowly takes out her laptop. Shania discusses with Whitney how she could feel her dad's energy at the Gurdwara. She wishes he could have seen her grow up. Whitney asks about Harbajan and thinks they share a vibe in the wedding pictures. When Shania tries to check the pictures on her laptop she finds it missing and starts panicking. Well, this is awkward. Harbajan's mom is worried since he hasn't eaten that day. Typical Indian moms. He keeps getting calls, but he ignores them. He hears voicemails later and knows Shania is thinking her laptop has been stolen. He also has voicemails from Avtar reminding him that he needs the laptop urgently. Harbajan gives the laptop back to Shania, but asks her not to publish the Hidra's article. She understands that he took it out so he could stop her from writing the article. She feels he got close to her just so he could get the laptop. This doesn't look promising at all. Harbajan insists everything he shared was true, but she's sure he was always spying on her. She regrets that she has fallen in love with him and wonders if his dad actually perished. He assures her that he would never lie about something like that, but she doesn't believe him. He insists he only did this so he could convince his bosses to not press charges on her. She runs away from him, and Harbajan knows he will miss her. Whitney loves Shania's article, but Shania is tearing up and coming home sooner. She's heard about Harbajan betraying her, and feels like she will have to write the article with just four weddings. Whitney realizes Shania is in love. I mean, we could have guessed earlier. When Aftar calls to ask Harbajan about the laptop, he claims it's with him and he's bringing it over. Let's see how he can pull this off. Harbajan is hoping this will hold off Avtar long enough to help Shania board her flight. Donald makes him realize he could go to jail for this, but Harbajan doesn't care. Isn't that true love? Donald also knows Harbajan is too scared to admit what she really wants to hear. He strongly believes Harbajan shouldn't let Shania leave without sharing his feelings. Harbajan reminds him this is not a movie, the irony. Donald still insists their love is real, and he can fix it. He rushes Harbajan to the airport, who gains easy entry when he claims it's an emergency. He learns that the flight to New York has already departed and doesn't know how to reach Shania. He lies to Avtar about the laptop again, but he already has it. How did that happen? Shania has turned in her laptop willingly, so Harbajan wouldn't get in trouble. Avtar decides to make an exception for Shania and hands it back to her. He asks her to respect their rules and use them wisely. He also insists she needs to take new permissions for the Hydra story. Shania knows her responsibilities as a journalist, and even Avtar feels the laws can only change when people change. Shania kisses Harbajan when they're free from Avtar's office. Alexa watches Shania's cover story about the five marriages in frustration. She has also pulled off the article about Hydras and is having her own Roka ceremony. As she's about to get married to Harbajan, a pigeon finds her, which she takes as a sign. 